Hello, uh, I am Sule. Uh, I work for Vbox. I'm an engineer there. I'm also a flex maintainer. Yeah, um, and I just wanted to also mention that uh, just a little shout out to Sule that that he was very instrumental in getting Helm OCI support into Flux, and also was the person who implemented Helm cosine uh, verification in Flux. So thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> uh, and yeah, um, I you. Well, you might be walking in for the first time, so I'll just say I'm Scott Rigby from Weaveworks. I'm also hosting the event, but uh, I'm giving this talk as well. Uh, I am a Helm and a Flux maintainer. Oh, right. <laughs> so, so thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, so today we're going to be um, talking about the integration of OCI artifacts as sources in Flux. Um, you know, Flux has the concept of, of, uh, of sources and they can be uh, Git as a source, OCI, or excuse me, you know, S3 compatible buckets as a source, um, Helm rep repositories as a source, and now uh, OCI repositories as a source for, for everything. Um, we're gonna start with uh, an intro where we'll see what our OCI artifacts are um, what their advantages are and why we even want to use them. And we'll then cover new features introduced in Flux around OCI artifacts. And um, finally, we will have a demo and we'll give you some uh, info at the end with links. Okay, right, so, thanks, Uli. Uh, yeah, so what's, what is an art OCI artifact and why would we want to use it? So. What we're showing up on the screen now, right now is something that many of you should be familiar with um, because you're here at KubeCon, um, but if not, and either way, we're going to do a comparison with artifacts and OCI images. So this is um, an actual, uh, the JSON for um, an OCI image manifest. It is a um, uh, OCI for everyone, hopefully you know, stands for Open Container Initiative, and it's essentially what happens when you build a Docker image or use any other OCI compatible tool to, to build um, and uh, distribute images. So uh, the image manifest describes the, the um, uh, components that makes up an image. So it's basically what pretty much everything that um, you will need to run a container down the road. Um, so the, and the config layer that you see at the top um, contains layer ordering information. So um, if you've got, you know, if you, you've seen uh, images have, have uh, multiple layers, right? Um, so that you want them to go in a certain order, generally speaking. Um, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and what, basically what needs to be um, applied in order to get root file system. So the digest, feature up, or the, the digest um, key up there is uh, a, cryptogra a cryptographic hash of the compressed content of the target component. So the media type, and then the media type will tell us, um, uh, excuse me, what compression standard is going to be used. So uh, the, you know, oci.image.config.v1 plus JSON um, gives you that, that's what I'm talking about and it gives you that information. And so, you know, the, the digest is similar to digest for other things, and it's a unique, um, a unique hash. So if the content changes, the digest will, will also change, right? So um, when fetching a manifest, uh, either the config or a layer, we have to apply the hash function to verify that it's consistent. Um, this makes the content immutable and addressable by its digest. Um, so what, what you have on the other side is uh, an OCI registry, and that is where we store images. The, the registry gives us a nice API in order to, to handle OCI images. Uh, if, you, if you look at the top here, you can see uh, we have several endpoints for every kind of uh, um, component we have. We have uh, in the endpoint resource identifier, identifier, you have the name, and you can do some uh, access control based, uh, based on the name. And on the top, you have the tag, the tag endpoint that you can use for content discovery. So um, 
we said that digests are immutable, tags are not, tags are immut uh, mutable. You can use tags for uh, human readable versioning of our images. So we, if you use the tag endpoints, we can retrieve, uh, do content discovery and retrieve tags for a given image. Then we can use the manifest endpoint and giving a reference. So a reference is either a tag or a digest, we can retrieve the manifest. Once we have the manifest, we have everything needed to pull the configs on the blob, on the blobs of our, our given image by pulling uh, using the blob endpoint. So we want to show you this because uh, OCI registry gives us nice features. We have uh, content deduplication, we can do resumable push or pull, and uh, the OCI registry is doing garbage collection as well. If an image is not reference at all, it's garbage collected for us. Okay, so at, at some point, um, users really wanted an artifact um, that basically that a type of OCI thing that it can, can store other artifacts that aren't containers, right? So um, basically, the the it was important to be able to. Um, oh, actually, do we show the artifact type? Yes, it's here on the convict media type. Oh, the media type. Oh, I thought you actually meant the the artifact type. Though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, like, this is the standard, um, uh, um, excuse me, um, artifact type for Helm that's registered um, as, a, as a media type, um, and that's the application vendor CNCF Helm config v1 dot uh, plus JSON type. Um, so that, w that allowed people, like, say, if you're using tools, uh, to get information from an OCI registry to say, hey, I just want my Helm charts that are stored there. In this case, it's Helm charts. Other artifacts can be stored as well. Um, and, a different, and you don't want to, say, parse through all of the container images in that same registry. This type was a thing to allow you to do that. And the, um, the Microsoft, uh, well, what was then the Microsoft project, which is now uh, a CNCF uh, vendor independent project called Oros, um, uh, which is OCI registry as uh, registries as That's storage, um, has fun, has a, a really good tool set to allow these things, so you don't have to do it by API, but you could. Um, yeah, and um, we've. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at my speaker notes for a sec. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, like the the idea is to use config media type for this, um, but. Uh, you know, users, uh, there is a thing uh, that was just added called artifact type. Yep, yeah. um, and that's, I think that's what you meant there, was that um, that is a way kind of to, to, to categorize uh, artifacts so that you don't have to register every type. So you could say, I have six different artifact types. You know, one's customized manifests, one's Helm charts, one's um, OPA policy, you know, whatever, right? Um, and, uh, and I want to be able to get only those things through an API. It wasn't really easy to do that unless you, um, unless you specify the media type, and generally you have to register that if you want to use it for anything besides internal use. Um, and so, uh, so what the spec chain, uh, basically with that addition, very soon you'll be able to not only have a different media type, but you'll be able to use the standard media type for artifacts with um, different artifact type keys. Uh, so why would you use uh, OCI artifact? The, the first uh, use case is in order to collocate your code and your configuration. You could, um, for example, for those of you that know about Flux image uh, automation controllers, today we use this to automatically reconcile actually our code and application. Every time we have a new version of our code, the image controller automation is reconciling it for us into our Kubernetes cluster. Today, if you have your OCR, you configure as OCR artifacts, you can do the same things with your configuration. The second thing is consistently referencing your images with your digest. You can do tag versioning, and we can do access control, as we showed with the registries. Looks like plus OCI. Cool. Um, right, yeah, so, so basically we're just showing you the difference, at the, how you migrate using, if you're a Flux user, how you migrate from using a Helm repository to using um, 
your charts stowed, stored in an OCI registries repository. Um, really, it's just these two things. Uh, that's that's uh, the square of red around there. Um, it's generally in the spec URL. Uh, you just put the URL as, if you're a Helm user, you know that you can do this using the Helm CLI. Uh, it's the exact same URL that you would pass for, um, uh, for where your OCI charts are stored. It just needs to use the, the, uh, the OCI uh, scheme in the URI. So and maybe just, mm -hmm. because on the left, it's a Helm repository that, that for uh, a Helm repository with an index, an HTTPS one, that we say, and on the right side is when you move this to, to OCI. Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good distinction. Yeah, so or, um, we should probably say that, yeah, that um, the HTTP Helm repository, um, if for anyone that doesn't know, has an index file that lists all the information about all of the charts in that uh, HTTPS uh, Helm repository and all of the versions for each of those charts. So there have been cases, uh, this is a pretty important point for people that are concerned with bottlenecks. Uh, for example, you may or may not have uh, ran into this, uh, if you're a legacy uh, chart user for Bitnami. Uh, Bitnami is one of the major chart, um, distributed chart um, sets of maintainers, you know, who, who rigorously, rigorously tests their charts and images. Um, and just they've been doing this for a really long time, and so a lot of folks trust them. They had to truncate all older versions from their, um, uh, beyond a certain point for their charts, because just the index file was like, something like gigabytes? It was yeah, just ri ridiculously huge. Um, and the reason that it needs that is because it doesn't have something like OCI, which has its own API for, for doing tags listing and things like that. So. Um, that, that's the only actual uh, functional change you need to make in your CRDs for Helm repository. Yeah. Um, the, the, other, the other change, um, it really just, if when you're moving from a, from a Git repository, so that was from a Helm repository to an OCI repository. If you're moving from a Git repository as your source, um, it's really just that. You, you simply change the URL um, instead of pointing to your, um, yeah, to, to, your, to, your, to your Git uh, URL, you point to the, um, the URI for OCI. And uh, Sember and everything works, the Sember constraints, the ranges and all that, they work exactly the same. So we have also implemented uh, uh, an integration with Cosine um, in Flex. So just to tell you how Cosine works, so Cosine is used to, uh, to sign OCI artifacts. Uh, so the way it works is uh, you create a key pair, an elliptic uh, curve key pair, you sign your artifact, or your artifact manifest, and you store the, the signature with your OCI, uh, OCI artifact. And in order to do the decryption, the verification, you retrieve the signature for the, for the, from the registry, you verify the, the signature against a public key, and you verify the claims as well. Verifying the claims means uh, you have a payload in the signature that telling you what, uh, what digest, manifest digest has been signed, and you verify that the, the digest uh, correspond. And there is an experimental feature of uh, study the transparency log that can be, that can be used. That's how that works. Um, so let's just show you how we do the HEM release reconciliation. So for this, we assume that we have uh, a, a running, flux, running flux controller, a HEM controller, a source controller, and that we have applied a uh, given manifest. Uh, then how does it work? Uh, from a user's perspective, you push your HEM chart to, to your OCI registry in your repository. Then flux source controller is uh, managing HEM repositories and HEM releases custom resources. So what it's going to do is um, first pull the signature. So this is optional. That's why we have this uh, it like this. You p but if you have uh, enabled it, you pull the signature and you do the, the, ch the chart verification. If the chart verification is successful, you can move on. If not, you have a nice condition in the custom resource when you do clip uh, describe that's showing you why the, uh, the build is not successful. Otherwise, after the verification, it, it is going to 
pull your helm artifact, build the helm artifact uh, with the given optional value files, because what we do with source controller is the, the default value file is not uh, included if, it's not, if you do not specify it. Then you package the, start, the, the chart and we store it as an artifact with the location that can be used. And then it's the, the Kubernetes API server receive a notification and notify all watching controllers. And one of the watching controllers is the Helm controller. What the Helm controller is going to do is first um, fetch all the values that you have set in the, into your resources, the resources being config maps and secrets, fetch them, merge them together, and then it will fetch the artifact and will do the deployment of the release. The deployment being either a Helm install or a Helm update. And then it's the same process that exists today. We have also integrated, uh, while integrating OCI, we have also, also integrated contextual login, and I think this is you. If you, if you wish, <laughs> I, can, I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, What we do is, this is something that we already had with the image automation controller. What, what it does is that it's uh, take your image, uh, your profile, your cloud provider identity service. And it's, if we specify that we want to use a given provider, it will use the workload identity either to the service account attached to your, your controller, either to, to the node, just a, the identity attached to your node. And what it's going to do is, instead of uh, providing a secret with uh, authentication tokens, you can just set a field provider with the name of your cloud provider, and what Flux will do is Flux will ask your cloud provider for a token in order to authenticate and be able to pull the given artifact. Uh, go on, Scott. Yeah, um, oh, only one other m note I wanted to, to mention about that is, um, um, it's, it's actually a, yeah, so, yeah oh, sorry, um, it's, it's a key on the OCI registry custom resource definition that just says provider. We didn't put those in the earlier slides because we didn't want to confuse, uh, didn't want to add that new functionality when we were talking just about migration. But, uh, but yeah, you just simply say GCP, AWS, uh, et cetera, and um, the, the OpenID Connect. We support two, two provider, GCP, AWS, and Azure Cloud. Yeah, and um, you know, the, the CLI um, has some, the Flux CLI, again, you don't need to use the Flux CLI in order to be a Flux user. Uh, it just, it's really handy, so most people like to use it for different things such as this. So, for example, um, you could use the ORAS project directly to build your artifacts, but, um, but Flux has built-in tooling to call that just like Helm does for, um, you know, the, the, the build um, push-pull. So these are the, these are the commands, flux build artifact, you, give it, you specify it, uh, a path to where your manifests are when you want to package them up. Um, and again, uh, since this is for a customized controller, it can be, your manifest in this case can be um, plain YAML or customized overlays. Um, and then you just give it an output where you want the packaged artifact to live on your file system. Um, uh, you, you probably, some of you may have seen Pinky's talk earlier where she just, she talked about Terraform and Flux. So uh, in that, that's an example of if you're using a controller that reads manifests that are packaged in a different way or represented in a different way like your Terraform plans, um, or excuse me, your Terraform uh, <coughs> uh, resources, you, your path would be toward that directory where you keep those, uh, or, or in the single file. Um, and then uh, you can do this, uh, essentially use, use Flux CLI to push as well. Um, it, uses or, uh, it, bas it uses the API, the same API under the hood. Um, you just do your Docker login um, to get your config, or however you want your, to authorize your, um, uh, to the registry that you want to use. And um, you just do a Flux push. You do the same thing, you, you give it the path that you, of the repo, um, excuse me, you give it the URI of the um, OCI registry that you want, and then, um, you know, the, 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 the app, in this case, that's the, that's the repo, 
and then um, what this, this is doing is just getting um, the tag, um, and um, and then you you give it the path where you where you want your manifests to come from. Uh, if you, optionally, right? If you hadn't already packaged it, you give it your um, your source. Um, well, the source is the way, on the way then you put this as annotation. If you, actually on the artifact. Right. It, yeah. Exactly. So it can comply with OCI um, annotation um, information so that you can parse that with your tooling. And um, in this case, um, why are we adding the revision now that I'm? Actually, what we do here, we, we take the, because this is from Git, we get the, 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 the current uh, Git commit and you put it as a revision, actually as an annotation uh, when you push artifacts. Oh, so when it, you pull right. the artifacts, you have the annotation and you can see it on the, uh, on the Flux side in the custom resource. Uh, that's so awesome. Uh, Sule knows more about this than I do, obviously. That's really great. Um, and yeah, then, then there's also the pull command. And it's, a, it's almost a, the opposite of the push command. Have to move because you have the demo. Yep, yep. Uh, now, the, the, for the demo, we, have, we will be using uh, a fork of um, PodInfo from Stefan Prodan. And we have two sc scenarios. The first one is that you are going to mig migrate PodInfo uh, Kubernetes manifest from Git to OCI, so the, we will be handling packaging and pushing the manifest to uh, GitHub Container Registry, signing it with Cosign, and deploying them to Kubernetes. The, f the second one is the same thing, but you will be using the provided Helm chart to migrate it to OCI, and again, packaging, signing, and entering to Kubernetes. Uh, let's see. So I, uh, yeah, we use a pack of PodInfo, as, as I said. So PodInfo is giving us um, manifest. We have uh, customization, HPA on the service, uh, deployment, and we have added or shared. We have added, so here we see the deployment. So I'm just going to move on. And what we have added is we have added a, sec a secret, uh, a sub-encrypted secret, which just to show you how we can package together uh, many different manifests. So this is encrypted with edge. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to package our manifest uh, as a tower archive, and then we're going to push them to OS. First, we package them, so we put what is insured and what is in customized in the archive. I will show you what's inside. And then we're going to push with OS. When you push with OS, what you're going to do is uh, we give uh, the location and the name of the, the OCI artifact with the tag, and we provide as well the major type. Here is going to be a layer of tar and compressed with gzip. So then we push it. And, and that's just to show again that you can push with either Flux, CLI, or ORS. So we have the digest. What we can go is look uh, on GitHub that we have new digest with 6.2.2. .2. Then we're going to sign it. In order to sign it, we use the, uh, the cosine CLI that will be generating uh, asymmetric keys for us, a, uh, private and a public key. And we're going to sign our artifact with the private key. So when you sign, you, you specify the location of the artifact and cosign, you're going to pull it, retrieve the manifest, and sign it first. And then push the signature collocated with the manifest. When it is pushing the signature, what we can see here is that uh, it, it uh, set a tag for the signature, find, finishing with that sig, and the tag actually is uh, the digest of the manifest, of the, uh, of the OCI manifest. So now this is done. So uh, we need, actually, we need the public, uh, the public key in order to do the verification uh, in Kubernetes site, so we create a secret with this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, once coming back, we're going to deploy an OCI repository, then put in full uh, with the location of our OCI artifact. And we're going to provide a, 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 sem a semver 
And at the end, we, what we do is we set a verify field with the provider set to cosine, and we give the security reference um, containing our public key. So we apply this, and then once it's applied, we can look at our custody, our OCI repository. For, and here what you can see is that we have an artifact, the artifact containing our manifest, and we can see at the end that we have a six, uh, in the condition you can see that we have a condition type source verified and that it has succeeded, and you have to verify the signature uh, of the given revision. Here. So now what you're going to do is we're going to, using the Flux CLI, we are going to create a customization that is going to fetch uh, the, the artifact set by the OCI repository and apply the given manifest in Kubernetes. And you provide the, uh, the sub decryption key for the, for the sub secret. So this is applied. Here, we, what you can see, if you look at the status, you can see here uh, we have an in, uh, custom, the customized controller giving us an inventory. In the inventory, you can see what is has applied. So here we can see it has applied a secret, a service, a deployment, and an HPA. Those are all the manifests that were part of, uh, of the archive that you pushed at the beginning. So we look at them then. We check that all of them are ready, the deployment. And also, uh, we have checked that here we can see the secret. The secret name, the web cred, has been decrypted. It's a Docker config JSON. It's not, uh, it's not anymore uh, a subscripted secret. So that was for the first one. So let's move on to we the second one. We may want to skip this video yeah, possibly because it'll be faster. Okay. So the second one uh, is now, um, so this is not the second one. This is the second one. Is uh, putting four providers also with a chart. So here we have the helm chart. Is uh, the best one is 6.2.1. So let's move on. What we're going to do is we will package it with Helm CLI, Helm package, and then we will push it to. Uh, this time we are using we are using a GCP uh, artifact registry, and we are going to use uh, the experimental feature of cosine. We, we are going to do a keyless signing. Keyless signing. Sorry. Uh, so so we package this. We push it, we check that we have a new version 6.2.1, then we do uh, experimental cosine. So when we do the experimental cosine, uh, a keyless signature, what it's going to do is uh, it's, it's going to authenticate us with, um, um, with uh, no IDC um, schemes. So we are, let's see. So what it's going to do is it's going to authenticate us because uh, what it's going to do is it's using the special uh, certificate authority to, uh, to generate uh, a really uh, short-lived certificate to do, uh, to, do the, uh, to, do, to do the signature. Short-lived meaning 10 minutes here. And in, uh, when it's uh, generated the certificate as an alternate name, you will have your email address, actually. This is something to know. So now this is done, and here what you can see is that uh, it has signed and pushed the signature. At, at the bottom, we can see that it has signed and pushed the signature uh, to our registry. So then what we're going to do, the same thing here that we showed, a uh, Hamid repository pointing to uh, our location, and we have set provider GCP here. That's mean we're doing a contextual logging, we're asking uh, Helm, um, hack. Our, we are asking Flux to use our, ad our identity, not identity, to fetch our uh, artifact from the artifact registry without providing any authentication token or, or anything otherwise. 
and then we declare a hem release that is pointing to this repository that will fetch put info and apply it for us. So let's see what once we do this. So we apply everything. So first we declare the hem repository. We see that it has succeeded. So it has uh, succeeded in logging and verifying the, the authentication uh, to our repository. And then we see the release. And we see that the release has succeeded and it has installed uh, the, the Podifold hand chart. And it has done the verification. We, have, we can see here that we said verify provider cosign. And if you look at the hand chart itself, We can see here that the handshot uh, has set the artifact, and then in the condition, we can see that the source verified has succeeded as well. And that was the end. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it was really short. Can you just do the conclusion? Yeah, the yeah, conclusion? absolutely. Um, so basically, uh, thanks for, uh, we're maybe going over like a minute and a half, two minutes, so um, then the coffee break. So basically just like wrap up a couple of links and some just info how you can get in touch with us. So, so basically like, wh again, why are we transitioning to OCI from Helm? It's to make sure that we adopt the same delivery, it's when you want to, I shouldn't say, uh, when you want to adopt the same delivery mechanism for applications and configs. So um, there's, no, there's also no scaling issues. Um, uh, related to the index.yaml that I'd mentioned before as an example with Badami, but that's just one example of many. Um, really, every time you call out to the index file, you're making another round trip. Uh, so it takes that away. Um, it also enables charts um, signature verification the same way that you do uh, your images. And it, um, uh, as uh, Sule was just showing in the demo, you can leverage, leverage your provider ID, ID service for off, so, or off end. So, and then why would you transition from Git to OCI? Uh, very similar, first reason, adopting the same delivery mechanism. Um, you also uh, avoid distributing objects with different life cycles within the same repository. Um, and, you, uh, and similarly, you enable your config objects, uh, sig verification using cosign. Um, it also allows better um, access control over a given artifact. And, um, and the same with uh, your, your auth end as well. So um, there's some links if anyone wants to screenshot it. Yeah, we'll yep. also, we'll also uh, you know, upload this, this uh, PDF with these links. And um, please, please, um, yeah, please stop by the Flux booth. We've got a lot of good talks coming up on this topic and other topics. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.